Hi, and welcome to another edition of One Guest. I'm Edgar B. Herwick III. The Titanic. For four and a half days in 1912, it floated on the water before it sank. And my guest today is one of the major reasons why there's still a legacy for it almost 100 years later. Ed Commuta, you are the founder of the Titanic Historical Society. Yes, sir, and it's very nice to be here. It's very nice to have you. Thank you so much. So can you tell me a little bit about how you began to become interested in the Titanic? Well, it's a short story that I read in junior high school in the Indian, Indian Orchard called The Great Ship Goes Down by Hanson Baldwin. And a few years later, I was corresponding with a survivor in New York, and unfortunately, the man died, and all of his Titanic material was thrown on the city dump by his landlady. Well, I thought this was quite horrible, and uh, yeah. I had been corresponding with other survivors at the time, and I told them that we're going to form a society that's going to protect this material. And these survivors started sending materials in, and that's what we have today in our museum in the Indian Orchard. So, wow. So this society has been around for a long time, it sounds like, and, and it's grown quite a bit. Tell me about the beginnings of it when you first started it. How many members did you have? In the beginning, we had five officers and about 40 survivors of the Titanic. Wow. Non-paying uh, survivors. They were honor members. And uh, they would contribute by giving us their stories, and we would publish them in our little magazine. So you have a magazine? Yes, it's called the uh, Titanic Commutator, and it's pu published quarterly, and it's paid through membership dues. Wow, that's fantastic. Now, you've met a lot of these survivors in person? Yes, we, I've met at least uh, a dozen of them, and we've had uh, 11 of them at one of our conventions in um, Delaware. And they were all thrilled to get together and talk about their experiences. Unbelievable. And it's the experiences for you that's a big part of this. I mean, it's, you know, I think about when you're a child, when you're in junior high school, and you read, a lot of people read stories about stuff. You read a story in junior high school, and you've been interested in this ever since. You've dedicated a big part of your life to it. What is it about the Titanic and the story of the Titanic that keeps you sort of passionate? Well, it's mostly about the, the people themselves, how they found themselves to be on board the Titanic, and what became of their lives after that. We had one gentleman, for example, that uh, took passage out on the Adriatic, a sister ship of Titanic, and they needed the coal for the Titanic to set sail because of a coal strike. And so I have his ticket that has got the Adriatic on it. Adriatic's canceled out and Titanic was stamped in, and he was third class, and miraculously, he survived. Wow, that's unbelievable. And there are other survivor stories as well, right? Oh, there are hundreds of them, and th that's what keeps the interest. So for you, it's really the people. It certainly is. And so you've got artifacts um, that you've collected from these people. Now, it's interesting to note for you, the artifacts that you've collected are from survivors, not from the wreckage itself. No, to us, the uh, wreckage is a, uh, a, a graveyard type of thing. And we respect the um, uh, solemnity of the, uh, the gravesite. I've had one uh, survivor who walked into our museum one day, and he introduced himself. And he says, I'm Frank Goldsmith, and I was seven years old on the Titanic. And his father put Mr. Goldsmith and um, his mother into the lifeboat. He patted him on the head and said, I'll see you later, Frankie. And Frankie never saw him again. Wow. And later when Frank died in 1982, his widow called us up and said, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, Frank wanted his ashes scattered over the wreck site. And I said, well, we'll take care of it for you. And a few days later, a man from the International Ice Patrol showed up. He picked up the vase and uh, the urn, I should say, and he went over the site two weeks later on the anniversary of the sinking of Titanic and put Frank back with his father. Wow. So to us, it's a hallowed site. And that's, for you, why you do what you do. That is correct. And your museum, which, uh, which is open and available to the public, is that right? Yes, it's open uh, daily from uh, 10 to 4 and uh, 10 to 3 on Saturdays, and we're close Sundays and holidays. Got to have some time off. That's right. And you're sharing the stories, uh, keeping them alive for another generation. Well, thanks for your work. I wish we had more time. Know, yeah. But you can get more information about the Titanic Historical Society on our website at wgbh.org slash one guest. Ed, thank you so much for coming Goodbye, in and sharing your story. Thank we'll you see much. you next time on One Guest.